I'm Allison Tannenhaus. I am based in Somerville, right by Davis Square. I've been here for about 15 or 16 years. Um, uh, originally from New York, came up here for school, and then, like so many others, never left. Um, my main background is actually, I was an English major, and I was like very much like a copywriter and a writer and words were like my thing um and that was my day job and then maybe like five or six years ago um I kind of just like was doing some street art and then like fell down the rabbit hole of digital art and making art on my phone and that was sort of like this very different um direction for me because suddenly I was doing stuff that was abstract and like had no meaning um or I suppose I'm still kind of like wrestling with that like does my art have no meaning or do I just not know what the meaning is or is it subjective and it means different things to different people so I guess I shouldn't be like it's meaningless because that's maybe selling a little short nonetheless no words abstract so kind of like this whole other part of my brain than the like marketing advertising copy side of myself I always had like a creative streak whether I was doing like t-shirt design or I was doing these like weird like bags with like doll parts when I was in high school and like doing some like outsider fashion shows and stuff so and even working with different bands to develop merch so I've always had like a creative streak for sure I just bounced around as to where the outlet was but finding the digital art side of things and being able to make stuff on my phone rather than being like a traditional fine artist, which I'm just terrible at, um, has been uh, a real reprieve um, in terms of just like uh, a happy place to go and a really cool way to express myself and meet other artists and just push myself to keep learning and figure out what applications are really I guess, useful um, in terms of like, I did uh, for Somerville, like my first public art thing, like versus like my street art, which was like word art and some cat stickers, which I still kind of do. Um, I did a, I did a, one of the phone art boxes um, in Davis Square. Like I thought of that as like my first versus like street art. That was like my first public art piece because I asked permission as opposed to just like did something and then just like hoped it would be okay. Um, so, uh, but yeah, in terms of my street art and my public art, they both began in Somerville. Um, so that's cool. Like looking back kind of, you know, in hindsight, like all the threads are there, but um, like when my parents were moving and they were downsizing, I was going through my old stuff. I found all these old like paintings and drawings and comics that as a kid that I had like no recollection of doing. Cause I think very early on, I was sort of like pigeonholed as a writer. So that was, and especially like with the academic world, that's something that, you know, teachers value. So for me to move in that direction was reinforced. Um, so I think I sort of, and then art kind of became just like, an elective or like, you know, a bonus class or whatever. And I had a couple of friends who were like very, very talented painters who were like, you know, the, the, those are like the artists and then everyone else, you know, everyone kind of just like becomes a certain identity at a certain point um, and kind of like shuts out other cool stuff. Um, so I think the threads were always there. Like I um, was looking back and like my mom was like an art history major and um, my dad is a painter and a ceramicist and like, they are always taking them to museums and they have, they collect art. Um, and I was interested in art history myself. And so I think I was always kind of like immersed in it and interested in it. But I, at the time of growing up, the mediums that were available to me just weren't things I like really gelled with um, in an enduring way. So I think a lot of it is just, I had, uh, a creative vision or some kind of inspiration or just wanted to play and then sometimes it was recognized and sometimes I just like gave up or I just wasn't really achieving what I'd set out to do so I think there was always just like this limitation of like um what was my knowledge what materials were available how much time I had how much I was encouraged to do it 
And then a lot of it was just on myself. Like if I felt like I wasn't good enough at it and I was, you know, demonstrably better at something else, then I was going to work on that. Um, so really the, um, and I was doing some like fashion stuff in high school where I was just like piecing together from like different fabric scraps and like making little bags and doing some like bedazzled t-shirts. It was kind of like, I would just like pick up little things, try it out. And if it either took too long or it wasn't, you know, something that was going to sell, or I just like, wasn't really feeling it, then I'd move on. So I, you know, like in my wake, I have like all these little, you know, hodgepodge things that at the time felt like little failures, but looking back, it's like, no, I was just like always iterating and always experimenting. So I think that's just been like, you know, the, the kind of the, the twist way to look at it is like, oh, I've always been like creative and visual, but um, it just never amounted to something that was like traditionally considered a success. Um, so, so I don't know if there was ever a moment where I was like, oh, I'm creative. Like, I think it was more like at a moment where when I started doing digital art, where I was like, oh, I'm creative and can actually follow through um, and create something to like fruition that I feel like is, you know, satisfactory as opposed to like, oh, I'm having fun and doing it, but this isn't really going to go anywhere. And even with the digital art that I was making, in the beginning, I was so into like the typography and like the word art and the glitch art kind of came around because it was like um, when like Instagram was like first coming out and everyone was like playing with filters. And I was like such a nerd about it that I like read all these articles about like different apps you can use. And just like, I was like, okay, if I'm going to be taking photos of my street art and sharing on Instagram, like I want the stuff to look really cool and really good and not just like a crappy snapshot. Um, so I looked into different apps that were more like image manipulation based. And in the beginning, I was just doing it just to have like a cool way to show my street art. Um, and I had a couple of friends who were like, this stuff is cool. Like you should enter different art shows with it. And I was like, no, 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 I don't want to like dilute my brand. Like I'm like, I'm a writer. That's who I am. I'm not going to deviate. And then finally, uh, my dad, who's a, I love his paintings. They're very like folky outsider, um, geometric vibrant stuff um was like I think this like glitch art is better than your word art and I was like of course offended you're like I'm a writer how dare you um but still like you know internalized it because I value his judgment um and then so I was like okay you know maybe that maybe that is something to consider and then what really sealed the deal is I had one of my um college roommates who was looking at my art um, well, I mean, she, when she was a former college roommate, this is after college. Um, and she was like, uh, I love it, but I hate it because this like particular series reminds me of like recurring nightmares I had as a child. And it, there, it really scares me. And I was like, that is so badass. <laughs> like, wow. Like my art can do that to somebody. Like I can evoke that kind of a strong reaction, even though like Yes, I love her and I'm so sorry that I scared her, but like, and I'm not going to force her to look at my stuff, but um, it was just kind of like hearing from people I respected who had a really visceral reaction. Um, whereas with the word art, like, yes, it had some value to it, but I also at the time was like, it's not as accessible, like people who maybe like don't get the joke are not going to appreciate this wordplay or like it's all in English. So people who don't speak English are not going to appreciate it. So um, kind of dipping into the abstract stuff suddenly kind of just like ripped open was like, oh, this is the answer. Like now I can make colorful stuff. It can be really experimental. It can be really varied and I don't have to know how to draw or paint. Like I was able, I can keep experimenting um, and it's really, it's really for everybody. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the idea behind it is like, I'm not, I mean, I make it for me, but at the same time, I'm sort of thinking like whoever wants to check it out um, can get it, it's accessible. It's easy to, you know, I mean, easy to process to a limited degree. It's also like very overstimulating. And maybe some people are like, oh, this is really difficult to process, but it's intended to be, you know, like, especially with the public art and street art, kind of the ethos behind it. Um, that's been like a common thread is that it's 
it's for everyone. You don't have to, you know, pay admission. It's a public art piece. It's just out on the street. It's on Instagram. You just have to have an account or just go to the website or whatever it is. So I think there's always kind of been this combination of like with all the art that I've done that it's like at, at its heart, it's like something that's like enjoyable and meaningful to me, but I hope is also like enjoyable, and meaningful to everybody else or people who who want to give it a shot. It might not be for everyone, but it could be for everyone. So one of the reasons that I'm really drawn to the apps that I'm drawn to is that I start with um, photos or my previous art, or sometimes it'll be like vintage artifacts or from collaborating with someone, it's like their material. And then I'm essentially just like remixing it and manipulating it. Um, so I, there's always this, there's like so much that I cannot control or anticipate. So it's kind of like I'm going along for the ride and just seeing like, what is the potential of the source material? Like how much can I stretch it? What can I uncover? So there's, it's like a little bit humbling in a way. Cause like I may go into something I kind of have to have like no ego when I start something. I can't have like too much of an expectation because chances are what's going to result is not what I intended or even imagined. And that's kind of what makes it cooler because I don't have, so it's, it's freeing for me because I don't have to feel like I have to know exactly what I want to do. And if I don't exactly like meet that, then I've failed or I've it's some shortcoming. Instead, it's kind of like easing it up on myself to just allow myself to play and see what comes of it and it's a part of it is kind of like this like improv in a way um where you're just feeling it out and trying something and saying okay does this work does this feel good what if i bring this finished piece into another app and try something so it's just like this constant uh push of discovery and i kind of go a lot of it is just by instinct where i'm like okay this piece is done or like this needs something extra or this looks like stuff i've seen before so i'm gonna like mix it up i think a lot of the the apps themselves are sort of more democratic because they give you so much room to play. Um, so you don't have to go in being an expert. There's like, so I, I've even kind of wrestled with like, how much do I teach other people? And um, because I do have like some secret things that I do, but I mostly fall on the side of like, if people ask me how I do something, I will tell them. I may not always remember, but I kind of have to, like my standard for myself is the, the work wasn't made simply by the apps. So I have to like have confidence that even if I tell someone my process, what they're gonna do with it is never gonna be exactly what I did. Cause I, there's something, I brought some kind of special personal thing to it whether and that's just like the eye that I have or some mistake that I made that like ended up being very cool. But I think it's just kind of like, there's no wrong way because in essence, like what I'm doing is sort of messing up to begin with. So um, it sort of gives you free, it gives everyone freedom to like just goof around. Um, and then however seriously they want to take it or whatever, meaning they want to ascribe to it or whatever they're intending or their source material or how they use the result um, is kind of up to the individual. Um, and that brings in some degree of specialness as well. But I, I think it's really, um, it's really flexible and um, there's kind of no wrong way to do it. So I think anyone can just like play with it and maybe they'll make something cool or maybe they won't, but that in itself is also subjective. So sometimes I'm just making an image or a video just to play with it. And other times it's like, I'm working on a music video. So someone has like a particular vibe or rhythm or color scheme, or they've given me like, you know, video of whoever's singing and they want me to play with it. So it completely depends. Um, but I think there's always just this kind of like intangible, like just this feeling like, oh, I got it. Or like, oh, this is the sweet spot. And I don't think it's, and I get there from exploring and I don't know, I have to, I'm actually trying to like get better at articulating it because if, as I do work for clients and I show them stuff, I don't want to be like, yo, this is dope. Like it's done. Like I've got to have like, sound a little more professional as to like how I frame it. Um, but that's like kind of at the essence. I'm like, is it cool and not cheesy? Like, does it seem like it flows? Um, so and there's always for me there's there, like with the movement and stuff like if something's like too polished or too perfect 
I just like don't gel with it. Like I like to have like if there's motion, like have a little hiccup to it or something a little irregular. I that's I think that's partly why I, I really love glitch art and making stuff with apps is that um, there's just going to be so many unexpected little things that go wrong or that you don't expect to happen. Um, and that's like the errors are kind of like what I live for, um, like all the happy accidents um, to just see, you know, kind of like this like dance with like it's with me, it's with the app, it's also with the art. We're all kind of like interwoven and cause and effect. And it's, I don't know, it's just it's kind of like this magical thing um, that uh, is really fun to make, which is really nice, but it's not just like, it's not like a chore to make and then I can enjoy the result. Um, so, and I kind of take that as like a litmus test is like, if I'm enjoying working on it and looking at it, then like, that's a good sign that like someone else will enjoy it as well. Um, Cause I'm never making stuff purely conceptually where I'm like, oh, it's like not that interesting to look at, but if you learn more about it, it's cool, which is like fine, but just not the direction that I go in. Very early on when I was still like just exploring the art world. Um, and I viewed it with so much reverence and like, detachment almost like oh like I can never be a part of that that realm like they're like they're like elite and like I just you know do silly stuff um but then kind of like doing that like that mindset shift of like oh they're people making cool things and like I make cool things so just kind of going into it like who can I make friends with and then especially with the collaborative aspect like by going into it, like who can I make friends with who I can also work with and we can make cool stuff together, um, made it a lot less intimidating. Um, and then also has just like paid off because I met some really cool people who are now my friends and we get to make cool stuff together. So I think um, rather than going into it, like, oh, I need to impress everybody and like be like this like high profile status person. Um, I didn't approach it that way at all. And said it was just like, I'm just, I'm just happy to be here, like just here to absorb and like maybe contribute something and just like learn and enjoy. So um, I think the having the community mindset has led to my finding a community, but I think it was there anyway. Um, and I've just been like really pleased by how welcoming and just like genuinely nice the Boston art community is. I definitely thought it was going to be like really snooty and like just hard to interact with and I was always going to be like butting heads but it's it's been really smooth I think maybe like as a counterpoint to like maybe just everything that isn't like academic or like science or law or medicine like all the like you know like button down shirt stuff in Boston I think that's not that Everyone's just like so pleased to be relaxed and just like not be doing those things. Um, but then they can just like relax and let loose. Um, so I don't know, but that's been my experience. I've been really delighted. Um, and that's kind of pushed me to like want to learn about different spaces and galleries and opportunities. And when I find opportunities, I, you know, send them out to different people. And I think part of it is like I started in the street art realm. And so much of that is like, you want to make something you just do it just go out and do it like you don't have to get anyone's approval and so i think that kind of gave me a certain confidence to be like i make art whether you like it or not and whether i'm invited or not <laughs> like it just kind of happened so um i think that kind of just like i opened the door for myself in that way mentally and then it's panned out that like that was the way to approach it um but it also makes it like because I like genuinely want to give other people promotion and like find out what they're up to. It's like if that's my motivation to like go and learn about an art scene like I'm not I'm not like being self centered about it like in general I do have the community at heart so it's just makes it easier to navigate, you know, sincerely so right before the pandemic. I sort of was like oh i'm like I still do some copywriting on the side and I also like cats it shout out to thoughtful paws they're local. Um, but, uh, I was really like right, right before the pandemic, I was like, I had like a hotel gig lined up an airport and like mental health facility. Like I had like these like places where I was like, oh, maybe I'll become like an office art person. Like I would be okay with that if I can like, you know, make my bread and butter by like jazzing up 
institutions or whatever it is. And then of course the pandemic, like people aren't traveling, people aren't like, you know, experience hospitality and like medicine is going, you know, remote. Um, so suddenly like my whole like little mini empire that I was like working towards just totally came out from under my feet. Um, I mean, fortunately I was, I'm pretty flexible and I was already doing stuff with like video projections and some music videos and album art. Um, but it definitely forced me to think about like how, how I, how I search for opportunities and like, you know, I was starting to look into more like consumer packaged goods, like what will be enduring and isn't going to be dependent on people being indoors <laughs> in a place <laughs> together. Um, so I think I kind of shifted more into doing like public art stuff with more like projections, um, outdoors, as well as um, more music videos, just as like I've seen more like entertainment kind of get embraced more in a virtual way. So I think it's pushed me just to be more inventive with like how I can create experiences. I guess it was like a few months into the pandemic when we still thought it was like not going to be so so long. Um, so Emerson went um, virtual with their learning. I don't maybe there were some students on campus, but um, I had done a show at their media arts gallery, Emerson Contemporary, the year before. Um, so then come commencement, they did everything virtually and they did this um, like on the common on one of their buildings, they did a big projection that had like all the students names and had different speeches, but I got to do um, some different word art and abstract art uh, that was put like kind of like interstitials like in between the show. Um, and then just like encouraging words. Um, and that was really cool because I think that was like, it was like an 80 foot square surface. So I think that was like my biggest um performance so to speak um but it's also just really nice that was still on the like we're all in this together warm and fuzzy mode of the pandemic so it felt really good to be part of something that was like you know connecting so many people who um and emerson being so like media centric having um you know all their students kind of like rally behind it um and check out this and i think it was like live streamed um in addition to being you know shown in the real world um, so that was like a really nice way to see like how they were adapting to serve their students while also giving something to the people of Boston who could just enjoy it, um, supporting the local creative economy. Um, so that was like a, you know, a way to make like lemonade kind of out of pandemic lemon. So that was something that was like, okay, we can get through this or, you know, it's not like all the opportunities are just gone. Like we can create new opportunities out of the circumstances we're given. Um, one thing I really want to get into is like um, is VR and a little bit AR as well, but mostly VR because like the ideal way I think to interact with my art is to just like completely dive into it and just have it become an environment that you just get lost in and can kind of almost like you're like taking like a drug free trip. Um, so I would love to be able to create like really immersive environments where like maybe it's like a concert where you have music playing the whole time, but you're able to like explore this other dimension. Um, like I think just the more that you can kind of like lose yourself in art in general is like more satisfying anyway. Um, but especially with my work, I'm just really into like if I'm kind of creating a world like I want to go hang out there. So I have to assume maybe some other people would as well. Thank you.